In this video clip, I'll demonstrate how to add new calculated columns to a video analysis. So I'm going to use a video clip of a falling ball. So I'm going to insert my movie like before. I have it on the desktop. It's called Ball Drop. This is a movie I made uh, probably 15 years ago dropping a little mini basketball. It's 305 grams, which is important to know because we'll need that for its kinetic and potential energies. There's a meter stick taped to the door frame for scaling purposes. There are only 19 frames in this clip as the ball falls, so we're going to mark all 19 of them. So I click to enable my right side toolbar. I click on add point, and now I'm going to mark, try to mark the middle of the ball. Now one thing you'll notice as you mark this video is that as the ball falls it gets a little bit blurry. That um, some of the technology from 15 years ago and not great lighting um, caused that, but it does put a little more realism into this because we have more marking uncertainty which is a source of error or uncertainty, unlike computer simulations, which would have none. So that's where the clip stopped. I'm going to set the scale. And because we're going to be throwing in energies, we want meters. So when I drag it, I tell it it's one meter. And then we're going to move the origin. Now, in this case, the origin um, for potential kinetic energy, I'm going to put the origin at the lowest point. So that would be the zero level for our gravitational potential energy. So the video has been marked, the scale set, the axis moved. So I can right click this to copy it and paste it into any document I want. When I look at my graph that's generated automatically, this case we want the Y, not the X, and we get the uh, shape that we expect for a falling object that started with a height of about 1.8 meters above the lowest point. This is not linear, so my equation, I don't use the linear fit button, I go to curve fit. And on curve fit, you have your option of many different types of equations. Well, I know this is quadratic, so it's a parabola. I put it on automatic. If you um, do manual fit, you can actually put in values for coefficients in your equation and see what it looks like. But I'll do an automatic fit. I have to click, click try fit and then I tell it OK. And then here is my equation. Negative 4.989 t squared plus 0.2539 t plus 1.833. That 1.833 is the initial position. I double my t squared coefficient to get my acceleration. So this gives me an acceleration of negative 9.97, which is pretty close to negative 9.8. The t coefficient is the initial velocity, which we expect to be zero. This is not giving me zero, but it is a small number. So I could go in and uh, title and label, but uh, in order to save time, I'm just going to show you how to add columns. So we want to do gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and total energy. So I go up at the top toolbar and I click data, new calculated column. And I'm going to call this calculated column gravitational potential energy, which is a lot to write. So the short name, I can just put it PE and I'll put little g. And the unit will be joules. Um, there is a pull down to let you put in Greek letters and other things. Um, even here, I could have put my G as a subscript, uh, but I'll just leave it as it is. 
Now, the equation for gravitational potential energy is mgh. Well, I know my mass was 305 grams, so 0 0.305 kilograms. The asterisk is our times. I'll put in 9.8 for the value of the acceleration due to gravity. And then the height will be the y value. So that's the column y. So just like you would do in Excel, you would say I've got my columns of all my y values. So my next column will just be 0 0.305 times 9.8 times that value. That's what we're doing here. So I now have gravitational potential energy. And when I clicked OK, it showed up in the data table. And you, one thing to notice is the gravitational potential energy started up, started out high and dropped as expected. So now we want to do a calculated column for kinetic energy. So we set it up the same way. Kinetic energy, it is in joules. And the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So I'll put 0.5 times my 0 0.305 times now I need my y velocity squared so I go to my column that's y velocity and from here I can go times another y velocity or I can use the caret 2 for square and I tell it done and I have a column for kinetic energy. And notice at time zero, the kinetic energy was zero, and then it increased as the ball fell, which is what we would expect. My last column is going to be total energy. I'll just call it energy. And we'll use an E for energy, and it's also joules. Now the way we get total energy is to add the potential plus the kinetic. So in my expression, I'll go gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy, and I tell it done. Now, in order to graph those, I will click Insert Graph. And for my graph, I want to put all three of those on the same grid. So when I left click my Y axis, I have to tell it more. I'm putting more than one curve on there. So I select gravitational potential and kinetic along with it. My Y axis label will just be energy in joules. I tell it OK and there they are. So my graph title, I'll call it energy versus time. And in this case, we want to put a legend in so that we will be able to tell which is which. So the graph that is developed has in blue the total energy. Notice how that total energy is staying pretty constant as it falls, just like expected. The gravitational potential energy starts out high and drops. The kinetic energy starts low and increases. So you can add as many columns as desired into your Logger Pro data table. So for constructing momentum, we would take mass times the velocity column. If we wanted to do net force, we would take mass times acceleration. Oh, but I don't see acceleration in there. Let's add in an acceleration column. So I'm going to say data, new calculated column. We'll call it acceleration with an A. This will be meters per second per second. So how do we get the acceleration? Well, it's the derivative of the velocity. So I need to go function, and derivative is a calculus function. So we'll say derivative, and in the parentheses, I tell it the derivative of the y velocity. And when I tell it done, it creates 
an acceleration column, and we expect that acceleration to be in the negative 9.8 range. And if we averaged all that out, it would probably come out to be fairly close to that. So Logger Pro will allow us to do any type of analysis that depends on positions and times. As long as we know the mass, we can get everything else.